everybody and happy video Monday, Tisha Mahar here. For this week's video, I want to pose a few questions to start us off. Do you have a hard time going hours between your meals? Like for example, do you have to eat almost every two or three hours in order to feel well? Do you experience energy fluctuations, highs and lows? Do you experience cravings, especially for foods like carbohydrates or caffeine? Do you wake up in the middle of the night with almost like a adrenaline rush rushing through and you almost can't settle back down unless you wake up and eat something? If you said yes to any of these things, you're likely experiencing some kind of blood sugar issue and I would love to try to help you get to the bottom of it. Dealing with blood sugar issues is a horrible way to live. It really can create a lot of anxiety within the individual and sometimes people have anxiety issues and they're not even attributing it to the fact that their their blood sugar is all over the place. If your blood sugar is all over the place, you are going to feel anxious, you are going to feel on edge. So what you want is obviously to have a nice stable blood sugar. This is the ideal. Now, obviously there are medical conditions that affect blood sugar that cannot necessarily be fixed just by tweaking your diet. For example, type 1 diabetes. However, Beyond type 1 diabetes, there is generally a lot of things you can do to help fix your blood sugar, but you have to figure out exactly what is going on for you because as with all of this stuff, and as I always say, these things aren't linear. There's often um, multiple variables at play and it's not always a super easy fix, unfortunately, but that doesn't mean it can't be fixed, so don't lose hope. So basically, when your blood sugar is all over the place, you're experiencing um, usually hyper hypoglycemia. So your blood sugar is rising and then your blood sugar is falling. There are two types. You can have hypoglycemia where you're experiencing those lows um, because of something that's going on in terms of your hormones. Um, or you can have what's called reactive hypoglycemia, which actually is your body responding specifically to the type of meal that you ate, maybe the size of the meal or the macronutrient combination that you consumed at that meal. So, um, for example, there are certain conditions um, that could cause blood sugar irregularities irregardless of what you're doing with your diet. For example, um, PCOS, hypothyroidism, um, severe cases of adrenal fatigue, all of these will cause blood sugar issues. Then you can tweak, once you know what's going on, like if you do have one of those conditions, you can then tweak your diet accordingly to help yourself out as you're healing from that illness, okay, or from that disorder. So that disorder itself, though, can cause those irregularities. Um, for example, with adrenal fatigue, often cortisol levels are really, really high. And regardless of anything else, if you are stressed and if your cortisol is up, then you're going to have sugar in your blood. So your blood sugar is going to be higher automatically. A lot of women, even just in the PMS week, tend to have higher levels of cortisol and also sometimes higher levels of estrogen, which can also cause more sugar to be in the blood and that can cause blood sugar irregularities. Now again, if you have something like this, eating a bunch of sugar is only going to make things worse. So there's, again, a lot you can do to get better control of this. Now, aside from a condition, you may have what's called reactive hypoglycemia. You could be a totally healthy person, but every once in a while or maybe once or twice a day, experience these huge crashes in terms of your blood sugar and in terms of your energy. And if that's happening, it may just be um, something that you ate in the meal previous to this energy crash that's causing the problem. So let's say, for example, you eat a huge bowl of pasta with very little protein and very little fat added to your pasta. So it's pretty much just carb central. It's likely that two or three hours later, you're going to have a crash. You're going to crave carbs again. You're going to feel really fatigued, almost like you could fall asleep. Maybe you're already asleep. Um, 
So that's a, a pretty easy fix. You need more balance in your meals. You can't just eat a ton of carbs at once. If you eat a huge amount of carbs on their own, your insulin levels spike. And whenever the hormone insulin spikes, it means you're going to crash later. So you want, again, try to stabilize your insulin levels as much as you possibly can, especially if, you know, um, you have one of those conditions I mentioned you need to work with your diet and your lifestyle to at least help lower the sugar that's in your bloodstream that's that's um, causing all the problems. So reactive hypoglycemia through diet can be helped quite easily. So if you're experiencing that, if you are pretty sure that you don't have a medical condition, but you know your your blood sugar's all over the place, here's a few suggestions for you. Number one, you're probably, at least until you figure out exactly what's what foods are causing problems for you, you're probably going to do better with mini meals throughout the day. So instead of having just two meals a day or three meals a day, having, you know, five smaller meals per day. You're also going to want to play with how much carbohydrate you're eating at each of those meals. If you're eating 50, 60 grams of carbohydrates per meal, that might be too much and that could be causing the the hypo symptom, the, the low that comes. So start with a smaller amount. A ballpark suggestion, and of course I love to to work with people one-on-one -on -one in this kind of thing as opposed to just generally saying, but ballpark, start with like 15 to 20 grams of carbs per meal. Balance that with some protein and at least, you know, a serving of healthy fat and see where you go from there. That's a great place to start. Oftentimes, if people are carbohydrate sensitive, a lot of people are, especially women, then they're going to react more um, strongly to carbohydrates. And I even mean the good carbohydrates like healthy whole grains and bananas and those kinds of foods. So be careful with your carbs. Try to be a little bit more mindful of how much you're consuming of that meat, uh, macro per meal, at least until um, uh, while you're playing with this and figuring it out. So five small meals as opposed to three large ones and just trying, you know, 20 grams of carbs per meal and then maybe see how you do with 30 or, or maybe you can increase it a little bit more. Maybe some of you are going to have to go lower and increase the fats and proteins. This is, is one way to really get a handle of this. In general, with hypoglycemia, healthy fat doesn't stimulate insulin. So that's going to be a pretty safe thing to for you to include at least, you know, a serving of in each of your meals. And protein is helpful for stabilizing blood sugar as well. So make sure you're not eating an entirely carbohydrate-based diet. This might answer your question alone. If you're eating almost all carbs and your blood sugar is all over the place, there's the problem. You need more balance in your diet. Um, yeah. So beyond reactive hypoglycemia, which again is happening perhaps because of your meal composition, beyond that, you need probably to get some tests done with your doctor. Um, working with a nutritionist like myself might be helpful for you. There needs to be a little bit more um, detective work that goes into figuring out what's going on. Often the problem lies within your endocrine system. So there's something going on hormonally that is throwing things off. But again, this doesn't mean that you can't do anything about it and you have to just go on some kind of prescription medication for the rest of your life. There is a ton you can do with your diet to help stabilize things, the symptoms, while you're dealing with your underlying condition. And then later you can probably introduce a lot of those foods that you really love. Food is medicine. Food is fuel. It can work for you. It can work with you or it can totally work against you. So align with your food, make food your friend, and really allow it to help you heal. I hope as always, guys, that this has been helpful for you. If you need help in terms of finding more balance in your health, in your diet, please um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I love to help people. I love to work with you guys. This stuff can be tricky to figure out, but food is really, really powerful. And it can also be a game changer um, in terms of a lot of these things. So please reach out if this resonates for you, if you need some help. Um, I hope you have a great week. And um, yeah, love you guys.
ักที่ซื้อ